Okay. 14B District Court is now in session. This is Magistrate Hillary Braley presiding. Now calling case number 24W001653. This is the Township of Ypsilanti versus Ivory. Third. So can I have names for the record, please, starting with the deputy? Deputy Trent. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. Ivory Williams the third. Thank you, sir. So today is the date and time set for an informal hearing in this matter. What okay. I have is a citation dated May 27th of 2024 that charges that on or about that date, Mr. Williams, you did operate a motor vehicle on Ford Boulevard at or near Ecorse Road and followed too closely. So do you understand that charge? Yes, I do. Thank you. So this is a civil infraction. There are no criminal penalties associated with this. So no jail time, no probation. The associated fine is $130. Uh, before we get started, Deputy Sims, was there anything that you wanted to say? No, ma'am. So, sir, you've got three options this morning in regards to this ticket. You can admit responsibility, that is basically admit to following too closely and basically pay the ticket. You can admit responsibility with an explanation so that the court can take into consideration any mitigating factors and potentially lessen or eliminate the fine. Or you can deny responsibility, that is deny that you are following too closely, and the court will swear in both sides take testimony and make a decision. It's based on preponderance of the evidence. So it's like a 59% to 51% standard. Okay. okay. So you understand those three options? Yes, I do. Okay. Which one do you want to go with? The third option. You want to deny responsibility for following too closely. Okay. Yes, I do. And what I am going to do is have both of you raise your right hands. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to the best of your information, knowledge, and belief? Deputy Sim? I do. And Mr. Williams? I do. Thank you. You can put your hands down. So the way that this is going to work, because Deputy Sims is the officer in charge of issuing the citation, he is going to testify first. You will not interrupt him. Once he is finished, it will be your turn. He will not interrupt you either, okay? And at that point, the court will ask any follow-up questions or anything else, and then we'll go from there, okay? Do you have any questions? No. Okay, thank you. Then, Deputy Sims. Good morning. On uh, 5-27-24, approximately 6-28 uh, in p.m. in the afternoon, um, we were traveling southbound on Ford Boulevard. Um, we observed a Buick LaCrosse in front of us, and there was another vehicle in front of that one. Um, they were both approaching the light at uh, Ford Boulevard and Eco Course, the turn eastbound, which would have been the turn lane. Um, the light was turning yellow, and the car in front of Mr. Williams um, did not have enough time to stop for the light. Um, and then Mr. Williams proceeded behind him with i want to say less than a car length through the yellow light um but that had that car chosen to stop in front of him he would have for sure rear-ended it and he was trying to make it through the light following extremely closely to that car um we effected a traffic stop on it on the vehicle um deputy gombos my partner at the time made contact with him um and he was issued the citation witnesses or evidence or other testimony that you wanted to present? No, ma'am. And so that I'm clear, what you're saying is that you observed them, you observed Mr. Williams's vehicle following the vehicle in front of it very closely. You said less than a car length, you think? Correct. What are you basing that on? Just um observation is there any sort of um like a landmark that you could see to give you some idea of how much space there was no so i obviously 
every day we're sitting there watching traffic and the appropriate car lengths for speeds differ. Um, that changes on Michigan Avenue to side streets to basically any road. It's different. The freeway is different, right? There's, you create more, more length between the vehicles. Um, my issue with him following too closely was if that car decided to, to stop, they initially tapped their brakes and I don't know if they looked behind them, but had they decided to slam on their brakes, they would have been in an accident. They had no opportunity to slow for the light. Um, and that was my concern is because he was riding so close behind them that if they needed to slam on their brakes, he would have rear ended them. Does that conclude your testimony? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Mr. Williams. Yes. As we were coming down Ford Road, there was a car in front of me. We both proceeded to turn. They were in, they were on Ford Boulevard at the light. We both proceeded to turn. I got in the middle lane. The car in front of me was in the left lane. And there's a right turn lane to get onto the, that merges onto the highway. We we're at the light, stopped. We proceeded to the next light. We stopped. And then as we turned is when they pulled me over. So the problem I had is the interaction. When they both approached the vehicle, he said that I tried to pass someone on the right lane, which it's two lanes. You can pass someone. And that's what I did. Um, I don't know how they really can, how he said he was behind me. They weren't behind me until we reached the second light. And then as they pulled me over, all they did was ask me for my driver's license. No registration, proof of insurance. Um, the interaction was two minutes and 30 seconds. Um, Deputy Gomes seemed frustrated because I asked him, who are you looking, what did you pull me over for? And he wouldn't explain. So I didn't realize there was a second that this uh, Sims was on the right side. And he said, you tried to pass someone and you were driving too close. I'm like, well, we're at a stoplight. Who am I driving too close to? So my understanding is they, they wrote, they, they went back to the car, came back 30 seconds later with my ID, issued me a ticket in my wife's name, which is Jennifer Williams. This is the ticket I received. It's in her name. So then I try to ask questions like I'm waving my ticket out of the window saying, I don't understand this. All they can say was take it up with the courts. I don't have to explain this. Take it up with the courts. I'm like, well, sir, there's a problem with this. And all they could say was take it up with the courts. I don't have to explain myself. So I didn't even put my car in park and they took off, went around the block and then pulled somebody else over. So then I tried to go around to ask them. So they pulled over and there, and then another police officer came and said, you're not allowed to stop at another stop. Like, I understand that, but I was trying to explain, you guys wrote me a ticket and it's in my wife's name. My impression is this ticket was written as they pulled me over. This ticket was already written he didn't ask me for registration, proof of insurance, or anything. Nothing. But then we go to the courthouse and the next day, and then they give me a photocopy that I had to ask for with my correct information. For one, I felt like I was targeted. There were three of a, three cars pulled over. We had tenant windows. But no one would, he would not explain to me this ticket. All he could say was, take it up with the courts. I don't have to explain myself. So I don't know where this driving too close to anybody comes from. I wasn't, we're at a stoplight. There was nobody in front of me. So uh, I'm ask you a couple questions. Obviously this was very frustrating for you. Yes, I, I mean, it's, I've, I've hold a CDL. I've never, you know, I've lived there 20 years and I'm pro police. I'm, I wave to them, I conversate with them, I'm like, you guys never, I mean, driving too close, it just, it's frustrating. It is very frustrating. It is very frustrating. If I was wrong, I, I would admit to it. I would, I'd admit to it wholeheartedly. But I feel this is just, this is just targeting me for some reason. I don't know why. 
I don't know. And like I said, they were looking for someone because there were police everywhere. And then there was four cars pulled over and I didn't understand. I'm like, maybe I can help you. What are you looking for? I know I live in a, I live in West Willow. I understand it's not the greatest neighborhood, but I am, I'm all about neighborhood, neighborhood watch, you know? First, uh, the court does want to acknowledge your frustration. Okay. It, as far as the informal hearing today, the informal hearing is on the matter of the ticket for following too closely. Issues with the behaviors of the officers need to be taken up with the Washtenaw County Sheriff's Department in this instance. Okay. 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 And it, that is something I'm sure you can find the information yeah. for that. On I'm the aware website. of that. Yes, I'm aware of that. Um, as far as the ticket goes, it sounds like you were observed following a light or following another vehicle through a traffic light very closely. Is that your understanding? That's that's what they told me as they were pulling off. That was the last thing they said. And you were following too close. I had to look at the ticket and see what it was what it was for. I thought it was running a red light or something or or speeding or something. I didn't. Do you recall having a car directly in front of you? Excuse me. Do you recall having a car directly no. in front of you? He was through the light. He was in the left lane. I was in the right lane as we turned the corner. I remember seeing him in front of me, but it was, I mean, it was, <laughs> it wasn't, it was more than, it was more than a car length. It was well more than a car length because he was through the light by the time I got to the light. So, and what you're saying too, is that what, there are two turning lanes? Yes. There's one turning lane, but the one turning lane goes into three lanes. As soon as you go through the light, there's three lanes. There's a right turn lane that goes into that goes onto 94. There's a middle lane and then there's a left lane. But the, they both go through and they go through the second light with two lanes. And then when you go through that light, it's two lanes. So as that car was turning left, he was in the left lane. I was turning left. I was in the right, the middle lane. There was another car in the right lane turning right then that's when they pulled up behind me there was no car in front of me at the light okay so magistrate yes i don't we're not talking about the same light so he's referring to the light at us 12 and it's technically laverne which is the section between ecourse and us 12 i'm talking about southbound ford boulevard and e-course road. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. There's three sets of lights that you went through. I'm talking about the initial first light mm -hmm. where we stopped you. Okay, what? and I'm going to point out, address your comments to the court, not to each other. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Thank where you. he just stopped was after the three lights because it's not safe to make a traffic stop in between those two lights because now we're blocking a lane in between two 55 mile an hour roads. So uh, it's my understanding that we were not seen until that second light, but we were behind him on Ford Boulevard, just past Parkwood. Okay. Can you see this? Yes. They were the first car on Ford Boulevard at the light. They were right. They were the first car. There was no one in front of them or behind them. They were the first car on Ford Boulevard at the light. Okay. I mean, at E-Course, I'm sorry, at E-Course. So that we can get oriented. You were turning from E-Course onto Ford or from Ford onto E-Course? From Ford on to E-Course slash... I don't know what you call that. I mean, but they were at the light at E-Course and Ford. So here. Can you see my mouse? Mm-hmm. 
So, so trying to figure out. Officers is what we're talking about. Yes, ma'am. We were both southbound for turning eastbound onto Laverne or E course. And yeah, they were turning right. They weren't behind me. They were turning right. Hold up a second. So, but this is the light that you were talking about making the where the following too closely happened. Yes, ma'am. I'm trying to figure it out. Like, so officer, okay, okay. You're saying that they were both in this lane, turning this way. Yep. Right. And he was the car right there on E course at the light. And so Matt, what you're yes. When you you see those three cars lined up north of that point that you have, that is the, yep, that is the orientation of how we were lined up turning eastbound onto uh you guys were on you were on Ford Road. You weren't on E course. You were on press, Ford Road. I looked right at you guys. Comments to the court. Okay. <laughs> this is this is not an opportunity oh my God. for people to start yelling at each other. Okay. So don't I understand oh that you were God. frustrated. I am trying to make sure that I can see approximately what was going on. So what you are saying, officer, is that both cars were in this lane. They were both turning left and they you were concerned that if this car had decided to stop at the light basically he would have been rear-ended am i understanding this correctly that is correct okay and sir you are saying that you both made it through the light did you notice that, that it was we both made it through the light yes did you notice if it was yellow or not it was turning yellow you both made it through the light, and then you're saying that he went into this lane and you went into this lane? Yes, that's correct. And the police officer was at that, the car was at that, were that at the light on Ford Road or uh, E Course Road. They were not behind me. I looked right at him. Okay, so uh, MCL 257.643 states that the operator of a motor vehicle shall not follow another vehicle more closely than is reasonable and prudent, having due regard for the speed of the vehicles and the traffic upon and the condition of the highway. Based on the information that I have, after looking at the intersection, the court is going to find you not responsible at this time. I appreciate okay. it. Thank you. So. And officer or deputy sims excuse me if you want to appeal my decision you can do so within seven days okay clear on it okay. so sir uh yeah. your hearing is concluded you are free to sign out of zoom thank you okay thank you and
Okay, sir, did you connect the audio? You need to connect to audio. Ah, there we are. You should be able to hear me now. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning. So you're a little bit laggy as far as your video goes. Uh, if you want to turn it off for now, that's fine. In just a moment. Now calling case number 24W001482. This is the Township of Ypsilanti versus Jose Perez. Appearances for the record, please, starting with the deputy. Deputy Sims. No. Mr. Perez, state your name for the record. Jose Perez. Thank you. Thank you very much. So today is the date and time set for an informal hearing in this matter. What I have is a citation dated May 8th, 2024, that charges that on or about that date, you did operate a motor vehicle on LaForge Road at or near Clark Road and did drive in the center lane and passive vehicle to turn onto West Clark Road. This is known as improper lane use. Do you understand that charge? I understand that charge and I disagree with that charge, Your Honor. So we're not we're not quite at that point yet. I'm stopping your video because you broke up quite a bit. Okay. Mm. So can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. So you did say that you understand the charge? Yes. Okay. So this is a civil infraction. There are no criminal penalties associated with this, no jail time, no probation. There is an associated $130 fine. Uh, before we get started, Deputy Sims, was there anything that you wanted to say? Yeah, I'm willing to amend this to impeding traffic or double parking, whatever your court usually does. Okay, uh, generally impeding traffic. So what that means, sir, the officer in charge of issuing the citation has offered to amend this to the civil infraction of impeding traffic. That does not get reported to the Secretary of State and it does not have any points associated with it. The fine associated with it is $180. So do you understand that offer? How much was a fine, Your Honor? For the impeding traffic? Yes. 180. Well, Your Honor, um, I will have no problem paying that if the stop wasn't really, it, it wasn't really called for a stop. Right. I would so, like to argue that stop that he, he made that day. Okay. So then let me explain your options to you. If that's the mm -hmm. way that you proceed, it sounds like you do not want to accept his offer. Is that what I'm hearing? 
Yes, Your Honor. Okay. So. Okay. So you have three basic options. You can accept responsibility, that is, admit to the improper lane use, which it doesn't sound like you want to do. Uh, basically, that would be paying the ticket as it is now. Uh, you can accept responsibility with an explanation so that the court can take into consideration any mitigating factors and potentially lessen or eliminate the fine. Finally, you can deny responsibility for the improper lane use, at which point we will have an informal hearing. I will swear in both sides, take testimony, and make a decision based on preponderance of the evidence, which is a 51% to 49% standard. Okay. Okay. You understand all that? Yes, I do, Your Honor. Okay. And you do understand that the deputy has offered to amend the citation to one that does not carry any points? I understand, Your Honor. Okay. And if you are found responsible for improper lane use, then that will have a couple of points associated with it. The court does not control points at all. I understand, Your Honor. Okay. Then... Which option do you want to go with? I'll go with the third option, Your Honor. Okay. So I'm going to have you turn your video back on for a moment. Raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to the best of your information, knowledge, and belief? Deputy Sims. I do. Mr. Perez. I do your own. Okay, thank you. So I am going to turn your video back off because you do seem to do better without it. Now, the way that this is going to work, I am going to take testimony from both sides. I'm going to start with Deputy Sims because he is the officer in charge of issuing the citation. So he will give his testimony. If he has any witnesses or uh, evidence to present, he will do that. You will not interrupt him. After he is finished, it will be your turn, sir. He will not interrupt you either. Okay? Understood, you are. Okay. Thank you. So, Deputy, Deputy Sims. On 5-8 of 24, approximately 10-44 p.m., um, we were driving westbound on Clark Road, approaching La Forge. We turned southbound on the forge from westbound Clark. We observed a vehicle. It looked like the, I couldn't tell if they flashed their lights or if they turned their high beams on and then proceeded to pass a vehicle driving in the turn lane, down the turn lane, and then stop at the stop sign to make a left-hand turn towards westbound or West Clark Road. Um, the vehicle passed that other vehicle. I don't know why they slowed down, um, but it caused them to slow down, whether it's because they were passing them or flashing their lights. I'm not sure. Um, but that vehicle had slowed down. This vehicle had accelerated past them in the turn lane, um, stayed in the turn lane and made a left-hand turn. So I am looking at Google Maps again. Okay. So Just drive going northbound that's when the passing occurred so is that is it my, my my turn your honor come in please i want to make sure that i'm understanding what the officer is saying okay so here's okay. the inter can you see this yes so uh, you were saying that you were going this way on Clark Road and turning onto La Forge this way? Correct. Okay. And uh, the two cars that you observed were going this way? Yep, they were going northbound. So uh, you're saying that they were both driving in the center lane here or they were both driving here and then the one car whipped around the other one into the center lane? They were both in the far right lane, and the um, 
Mr. Perez was got into the turn lane. Um, if you scroll down a little bit, you might be able to see Villa Drive. Yes. So it wasn't that far, but it was wherever that circle is. I want to say close to where that was. I'm not sure what that is, but yes. So wait, were they going towards Villa Drive or onto Clark? They were going towards Clark Road, but right about where that circle was is where Mr. Perez entered the turn lane and passed the vehicle. Yeah, I want to say it was just past that. Right about there. And just so that I'm clear, this is a center lane with the solid yellow on either side and then the dotted yellow on the inside? Correct. And then I think there's an opening down there for where you would get in the turn lane near the solid white line. So what you're saying is that he used the center lane to pass. Use the center lane to pass and then stayed in the center turn lane, yes. Finally, is are there any sort of um is there any signage or anything over there that would be pertinent? There's no mark signage, no. Do you have any other testimony or witnesses or evidence that you want to present? No, ma'am. Okay, Mr. Perez, now it is your turn. Okay, Your Honor, thank you. Um, the In part, what he says, uh, it's incorrect. Right where he pointed at that circle, that's not exactly where I turn. I turn a little further up. And the vehicle in front of me got first to the stop sign, and then he's, and then that's when I saw him. So when I when I got to the stop sign to make that left turn, that's when I saw him. So we both got there. He, uh, the first vehicle in front of me first, and then me. I put my turn signal, and I turn. We both turn. He turned the vehicle in front of me turned right. I turned left. And then the police officer turned left to go down southbound on La Forge. And then he proceeded where the circle is. He proceeded to make that U-turn and pull me over on Clark Road on the left side. Okay. So uh, did you pass the car that was that had been in front of you that one? No, Your Honor, because the car got there first to the stop sign, and then I and then and then I pulled up, and that's when I saw the the police car being on the stop sign. So that's when I was gonna let them turn first, but they sit there. So the car in front of me turned right, I turned left, they turned left to come down uh, southbound on La Forge. So they turn to go down past that. And when they got to that circle, they made a U-turn and they pulled me over on that street. Okay. So what I am asking you is when you were on La Forge and you were behind the car that eventually turned right, did you move over into the center lane to pass them? No, Your Honor. Actually, what I, what I did is... I don't know if you can do, I don't know if that's a live picture or a recent picture of that street, but that street is, it's actually going to be closed down next week because it's going, it's going under repair due to the uh, condition of that street. So what I was doing, I was avoiding potholes on the, on, on, on the, on the, on the, on the path that the vehicles usually takes, you know, when you're like in the freeway and you see that black mark from the tires. So all that, all that path is full of potholes. So what I did was veer a little bit to the left and then I proceeded to veer off, you know, to come off to the, to the, to the, uh, to the turn lane. And that's when I saw the police officer sitting on that stop sign, but the car in front of me already stopped and it was proceeding to make a right turn.
So the officer actually, he made the turn down on the forge and made a U-turn again and pulled me over. There was only two vehicles, the vehicle in front of me and myself. And as, and as we both get into the stop sign, I veer a little bit to the left to avoid the potholes that are on that side. And then I made the complete full emerge to the left side so I can make that left turn. Okay. Thank you. Give me just a minute. I actually have a video. I'm sorry to disturb you, Your Honor, but I actually have a video that my wife took as we were going up that hill. Um, so, so I'm cutting you off real quick. Is it from the time of the traffic stop? It is from the next day over during okay. daylight because it was it, it's it's a night when when I got pulled over it was night it was dark. Okay, so then no, I would if if you were going to show it, I would need something from when it happened. Okay, I got you. Was there any oncoming traffic when you No, Your Honor. No, Your Honor. It was only me and that vehicle in front of me. Deputy Sims. Yes, ma'am. Did you note know whether or not there was any oncoming traffic? Yes, us, me and my partner. Your Honor, may I? Yes. Your Honor, um, he was not coming down because I make the left turn first and then he turned. So he couldn't come down at the same time that I'm going up when I make the turn first before he did. Okay, so I'm not sure what you're saying. He would have passed you on the road. Is the right, but he waited for me to make the turn. And then he proceeded to make the, the left turn going southbound on the forge. And then he proceeded to make the U-turn to take Clark to pull me over. So the court is ready to make its decision. What I am going to say to both parties is that you have seven days to appeal my decision. And if you do so, then the judge will hear it as if it's brand new. Okay. At this time, based on MCL 257.642, which specifically states that on a roadway that is divided into three lanes and provides for two-way movement of traffic, a vehicle must not be operated in the center lane except under any of the following circumstances. If overtaking and passing another vehicle traveling in the same direction and the center lane is clear of traffic within a safe distance, in preparation for a left turn, and etc. So... At this time, the court is finding you responsible for improper lane use. And as stated, if you feel the need to appeal me, you may do so within the next seven days. The associated fine with this is $130 that may be paid to the 14B District Court. And this hearing is concluded. Thank you. And you are both free to sign out of Zoom.